Y bueno, vamos ahora a dar inicio con la siguiente conferencia de este quinto encuentro de negocios del clúster de electrodomésticos del Estado de Nuevo León, con el tema expectativas y requerimientos de Carrier hacia sus proveedores. Me voy a permitir presentar a nuestro siguiente conferencista con la lectura de un extracto de su semblanza. Nuestro siguiente conferencista es el ingeniero Chad Gurdeman, él es licenciado en Ingeniería Industrial y de Fabricación por la Universidad Estatal de Pensilvania y cuenta con una maestría en Administración de Empresas por la Wake Forest University. En 1994, siendo aún estudiante en la Universidad Estatal de Pensilvania, se une a la UTC, United Technologies Corporation, conglomerado del que forma parte la empresa Carrier, a la que ingresa en la ciudad de Syracuse, en Nueva York. Al graduarse de esta Universidad Estatal de Pensilvania en 1997 se incorpora de tiempo completo de tiempo completo a la UTC e inicia su carrera en las operaciones como programador maestro de fábrica y empieza a ocupar cargos de cada vez mayor responsabilidad hasta llegar a ser gerente de materiales del 2003 al 2005 y gerente de logística del 2005 al 2006. Después de una breve asignación en tecnología de la información para apoyar en la primera implementación del SAP en Carrier del 2006 al 2009, regresa a las operaciones en la fábrica de hornos de la UTC en Indianápolis como comprador de materia prima. Del 2000, en el 2011 asume el cargo de analista de cadena de suministro y es después promovido a gerente en la sede mundial de cadena de suministro de este importante conglomerado. Es actualmente, desde el 2016 a la fecha, gerente global de la división de válvulas y productos relacionados con válvulas y desde este cargo es el responsable de la gestión global de proveedores en la CCS, unidad de negocios de la UTC, en la categoría de válvulas. En esta función desarrolla, mantiene la estrategia global de abastecimiento de válvulas para alcanzar los objetivos estratégicos de la compañía y es el responsable de promover asociaciones a largo plazo con proveedores clave, gestionar objetivos y metas de rendimiento, negociar acuerdos de suministros y aumentar la productividad de los materiales, por todo esto y más es un honor para este clúster de electrodoméstico darle la bienvenida al ingeniero Chad Gurdeman en este quinto encuentro de negocios. Welcome. Uh, buenos días. Uh, gracias por la oportunidad de hablar en la conferencia de hoy. Uh, aprende a hablar español uh, en mi escuela de primero 30 más o menos años pasado, uh, pero estoy at mi límite. So, I'm going to continue in English from, from here on out. I'll try to, the best I can to speak uh, so that everybody can understand and, and follow along. First, I'd like to engage in my own little, uh, say, shameless marketing ploy about UTC and and uh, CCS, as, as you heard, I've spent my entire career uh, with, with United Technologies. Um, we're a global leader in uh, building systems and aerospace industries. We invent new ways to, to keep people safe, comfortable, productive, and on the move in this global uh, economy that we're in these days. You'll recognize some of our iconic brands that, are, that make, up the, uh, make up UTC, both on the commercial and on the aerospace side. Uh, a little bit more about our, our company. Uh, we're a Fortune 50 company, uh, more than 200,000 employees worldwide and growing, and a little over 60 billion in adjusted revenue in, uh, in 2017. And that's prior to the close of the Goodrich acquisition that, that's underway. When that completes, that that figure would, uh, will go up to 80, roughly 80 billion. On the top of the slide, you can see kind of where a little bit more about our, our sales. We, about half of our business is in commercial and industrial. The other half is in aerospace between both commercial and the military uh, segments. Uh, we're a little over half of our business is uh, OEM equipment, and the other half is aftermarket and, uh, and services. We compete worldwide, and you can see we're highly diversified uh, in, on, in all continents across the world. 
CCS is where, is where I work. I started with Carrier, and now as through organization changes and, and the way things evolve, we're now CCS, Carrier's a brand. Um, you know, we are, we are in a heating, ventilating, air conditioning, HVAC, and refrigeration company, as well as, uh, as, well as building controls, uh, automation, fire and security. Uh, we're, leading, we're making products for safer, more comfortable, sustainable, high-performance environments. Our mission is to be our customer's first choice. We are, at UTC, very highly customer-centric. And today, what I hope to, to build on with what, Mar what you heard from Marco is what we value from our supply chain and, and as a customer, what we value from you as a supplier. We all have, we have customers as well. And we, we walk that talk every day. We are very customer centric. And we want to create and maintain that in environment where our customers come to us as their first choice. So a little bit more about CCS. We have three basic marketing market segments. The first on the, on the left is the HVAC segment where we build a complete line of residential, light commercial, commercial, and applied equipment to, that heat and cool uh, offices, buildings, homes, you know, every, everywhere that, that uh, air conditioning is, is, is used. Our second segment is in the fire and security. Sec in the fire and security. Things like uh, fire suppression, building, uh, building security, access controls, um, and a variety of other uh, automa building automation and systems. And finally, the refrigeration segment, where, it, the, where we bring uh, food from the producers to the consumers. And we keep that food safe for consumption, with, from truck trailer to container units to the grocery store cases where, where, the, where the food is presented. A little bit more about CCS. Uh, about half our business is in the Americas. Uh, you can see over the Asia and EMEA make up the round out the rest of it. We're about half HVAC. The refrigeration is a is a, another significant segment in our fire and security. Finally, uh, again, big big focus on uh, OEM equipment, uh, but the field services and aftermarket is certainly a big piece of our business. Fifty five thousand employees worldwide. We're serving and competing in 180 countries, and our revenue just shy of uh, 18 billion in 2017. So that kind of brings me to what we're here to talk about today, or what I'm here to talk about today, is what we value from our supply chain. Um, I, I've come up with kind of a crude representation of what I would say is, it, it can be used to kind of summarize and represent what, I, what we're talking about here. Uh, in, in this case, you know, a, a temple, and that's built on a foundation. It's got pillars that hold up the roof, and without all those components of that structure, you know the, the the sustainability and the and the strength of that that found, that that building, or in this case your organizations, is is compromised. In order for our 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 organizations to be successful, none of these components can be mutually exclusive. Everything is dependent on each other. This is how UTC has built our our company into an industry leading business units. And without supply partners committed to the same general principles, we cannot be successful. We rely on our suppliers uh, as much as we rely on our own internal uh, employees. So let's start with culture. That's the foundation, right? A lot of times culture is not even visible. The foundation of a building is not even visible. But it's, it's, it's extremely important in creating that, that environment where you, you can be uh, you can be a, a key participant in our industry. And, it, and I would say our industry can cover everything that's in here. We, we make HVAC equipment, there's home goods, white goods, uh, but all of that is, is, a, uh, you know, it, it is, a, is a preferred market out there. Organizations have to be willing to commit resources and time to building a strong foundation for which to build their, to build their company. You can't cut corners. It will become evident very quickly. Um, a, a strong culture is an organization committed to continuous improvement. 
And I've listed a few things here of what continuous improvement is. Lean manufacturing, absolutely critical these days. Uh, you know, value engineering, striving for zero defects and 100% and on time, even when you think it's impossible. It's not. We have to always be striving for, for excellence. We're looking for lead time reductions. We're looking for automation. We're looking for increased flexibility out there. We want you to anticipate our needs. You know, we want you to bring your manufacturing put, footprint to where our manufacturing footprint is so that you can service us in an efficient manner. We want you to be proactive, not reactive. Uh, we want you to bring solutions to us. Don't just identify a problem, but bring solutions. Understand our business, understand our markets, and bring solutions that can help move our products forward. And we always have to be competing in an ethical business, ma in an ethical business manner. And we have to be, there's a, a, a renewed commitment these days to sustainability. It's very important to people that we be sustainable. So what I, my, my, my summary of this is, is be a partner to Carrier, not just a transactional supplier. Anybody can deliver parts and come and get a purchase order, but be a partner. Help us move our company forward. We cannot do it without you. So the first pillar in the, in the temple, and I think, you know, I, in no particular order, but I put quality as, as my number one pillar. Some of the basic requirements we have for our suppliers is you have to have an ISO certification. It's an absolute requirement. It shows that you've got a commitment to process control and, and commitment to, to improving and maintaining that. You have to demonstrate a robust quality management system. Process certification is, is our term um, for statistical process control in our ACE operating system, kind of like a Six Sigma, we call it ACE. But we, we want to see all of these things evident in your quality management system. And we measure your performance through our supplier gold program, which we'll talk about here uh, in just a second. So the, the process of, of, of of improving quality, we believe, is a, is a life cycle, and it's focused on the customer. All of our customers expect quality. When they, when they turn on their thermostat, they want that cold air to start blowing, or they want warm air when, in the wintertime. When people get a new appliance, they expect it to plug in and work, and work for a long time, and the, the, the ice maker to function, the dishwasher to be quiet, whatever the case may be. All of our customers are, are demanding of quality. And this, this is a cycle where we are continuously improving our product to meet our customers' expectations, and they're changing expectations for quality. And it, in our customers, in our minds, they come first. And, and we are committed to that. And we want suppliers that look at this in the same manner. You have to be committed to this, this cycle of understanding what the customer wants, designing your product to, to meet that need, gaining their feedback on how, how their, your product is perceived, and then starting the whole cycle all over again, incorporating that back into your design and continually improving your products. So this is our model for how we manage or how we measure our, our customer satisfaction. Okay, the, the, some of the things that we've already talked about, we, we measure this from our customers every day. And we, we ask things like, how, what's our overall performance? How do you, how do you see us as, as performing as your customer? Are we competitive on cost? Is our quality exceptional? Is our delivery exceptional? And then there's some soft things, right? How easy is it for us to do business? How, how good is our support? How responsive are we to your needs? And how flexible are we to, to your changing needs? And, we, we measure that through market feedback, and we give surveys, and we strive for at least a six or greater. We, we consider over six in market feedback to be world class and where we, we want to be. So everyone in the room needs to understand where they are with their customers. I, ours, we need to understand where we are with our customers, and as a supplier to UTC or, or carrier, you need to understand how we view you. And you can't do that unless you ask us and you work hard to, to understand how we feel about you. And it's not just the supply chain people you deal with, it's quality people, the engineers that we, that we work with as we design our products and integrate your product into ours. So it's a, it's a cross-functional, wide, wide range that we require and that you should be soliciting feedback from. You cannot improve if you don't know where you stand. 
so our, we measure our, our suppliers through our supplier gold program. There are basically four levels. You can see on here we, we rank, we segregate based on your performance and quality and on-time delivery. And then for suppliers that want to achieve the gold status, there's a, a, few extra require, a few additional requirements that you have to go through. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But I want to talk about how, you, how, we segment, how we segment suppliers into these groups. So you can see on the gold level, we require zero PPM and 100% on-time delivery. It's a difficult goal, I understand. So we've got the caveat there that you have to be best in class. Not any, just any supplier can be a supplier gold. You have to be the best in class or you have to be able to deliver zero defects and 100% on time. To be performing less than 500 PPM and greater than 95% on time. Those two groups right there are the only acceptable measures or, or levels for a supplier. If you're in the progressing or the underperforming categories, your time with, with carrier, frankly, is limited. And you have to improve and you have to be able to sustain that improvement. So between 500 and 1500 PPM, you know, that, that's, that, may seem, uh, that may seem rigid, but it's, it's, it's an absolute has to be. You know, greater than 85% on time delivery, we can't, we can't live with that. Right? We can't live with less than 85. We, we will not tolerate that. And if your PPM is greater than 1,500, we, we have problems. So suppliers that find themselves in those buckets are pushed very hard to improve. Or I, as a category manager, am tasked with finding somebody else that can do the job. And frankly, we, we have no tolerance for, for suppliers that, that can't achieve that performing or gold uh, performance and maintain it. We measure these metrics on a six-month rolling basis. So one escape, one spill, and you live with it for six months. It, it ruins your metrics for six months. So we just have to have perfect parts on time every time. There's just no substitute. So here's, here's how our suppliers, here's what, where we are today. This is slightly dated data. You know, we, we have roughly 6,000 suppliers. Um, it's not possible or practical to track all 6,000 in the program. So UTC requires that 75% of our spend be included in the supplier gold program. So 410 product suppliers represent roughly 75% of our spend. So we have a long tail of suppliers with very low spend. You can see how our suppliers segment out here. I, I, I think it's, it's, it's the, the thing that strikes me the most is what I said, the only, the only acceptable performing levels are performing in gold. We have 45% of our suppliers by number in the, in the underperforming or the progressing categories. It's unacceptable to UTC, unacceptable to carrier. So we're always looking for new suppliers who can maintain performance that we expect. All right, it, at CCS we have a, a slight variation from the UTC program where we have gold performing. Those are suppliers that we would consider to have supplier gold metrics and performance, but have not yet been nominated or have not yet completed the, the, the process to achieve supplier gold. It's a very rigorous process. You can see there that you have to have, we measure our, our gold suppliers on a 12-month rolling basis instead of six. The, to be performing, it's a six-month uh, six metric. We do an on-site uh, supplier health assessment, very similar to what you heard from Marco. And we, we require your customer satisfaction scores with us to be over six. It's nothing that we don't require of our own organizations. So, if, so there's opportunity. Uh, my message here today is there's opportunity because we have way too many suppliers on the bottom of that pyramid. Just to give you a, a piece of perspective, if I were to add spend to that, about 70% of our spend is in gold or performing. So 30% of our $6 billion supply chain is suppliers that are not meeting our expectations. That's quite a bit of spend that, is, that we and I am out looking for alternatives because if, if, the, if the current supplier can't do it, I have to find somebody else. Our CEO makes commitments to our shareholders every year on improvements to our supplier gold metrics and the way, our, the way we're managing our suppliers. And frankly, we're not meeting those metrics right now. It's very difficult 
in supply chain for me right now because we aren't not meeting those, those metrics. So there's opportunity. There is plenty of opportunity. But you have to be committed. You have to be committed to it. So here's the process for, to be nominated and, and to, go to, to go through supplier gold. So we measured the performance. And as I said, 12 months, you have to have perfect metrics or you have to be best in class. We'll do the supplier health assessment. You'll do the, the market feedback. And if there are gaps in any of those, we want to plan for how you're going to close it and we'll come re-audit. We'll validate the results and then there'll be a nomination award. This process can take a year, can take less, if, if, depending on the supplier, but it can take more. It's very rigorous. So only a handful of suppliers have achieved. It's a very prestigious uh, uh, designation to be a, a UTC supplier, gold supplier. And you have access to increased opportunities. If you can prove and demonstrate that you can maintain these metrics, then there's opportunities for you across UTC. You may be just in the commercial division, but across our company, there are opportunities for you to grow your business with UTC. One thing that people don't think too much about when we talk about quality is product safety. There have been numerous high visibility product safety issues in the market over the last five or six years. Airbags exploding that have been injuring and killing people. Cell phones catching on fire. Ignition switches getting stuck. Accelerator pedals getting stuck. Car batteries catching on fire. All of these things result in third party lawsuits for damage and, and death. And it, and it impacts the brand and the company that allows that to happen. We're all consumer products in this room. Every one of us have a consumer product. We touch the consumer every day. If our product hurts them or it burns their house down or it kills somebody, that's, that's very damaging. And we just cannot allow that. So product safety and quality go hand in hand in my view. And the, it, it, it's key, if you are managing your processes, then these kind of things won't happen, right? The first people to see a potential product safety issue are the people that, that produce the product, that design the product, that test the product, that, that, that take quality metrics and take data from the in process. Those are the people that see things. They have to be empowered to raise their hands. They have to be, understand how important that is. And as a supplier to carrier, we absolutely demand that we are not going to have any of these kind of product safety issues. So managing your processes through, through the same things that will allow you to be a, a, a key supplier to UTC will also allow you to prevent product safety concerns that will come up. So I, can, I can't say it strongly enough, quality and product safety just go hand in hand. And we have to understand that the risk of a, of a product safety issue is just too great. It's too damaging to the company. So let's move on to delivery and logistics. Um, just a few things about delivery and logistics. You know, 100% on time is an absolute requirement. The, the lifeblood of a factory is, is the materials that come in so that we can produce our product. Without perfect parts delivered to me on time in a manner which I can use them efficiently, I, I can't run my factory. And it, it, does, and it doesn't matter at that point. I just have to have perfect quality and I, we have to have 100% on time delivery. We're looking for lead time reductions. We want you to be more flexible. We want lot size reductions. If I want one piece, I should be able to order one piece. I, don't, I, don't, I shouldn't be constrained to have to order 10 or 100 because I have floor space that I have to take up with your inventory. And every square foot of floor space that's taken up with storing inventory is a square foot that's not generating revenue for UTC. And we're all about generating revenue and reducing the, the wasted floor space for materials. We need you to understand your capacity. You know, we're in a very seasonal business, a very seasonal product. We cannot control our customer demand. When they want a product, they want it, and we have to have it. So when we need a part, we have to have it. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's not going to be perfectly forecasted. But you have to be flexible. You have to change with our requirements, and you have to understand what it, what's the key capacity constraints in your organization, your operation. We want your manufacturing footprint close to ours so that we can react quickly that there's not a big delay from the time it leaves your dock and it gets to my dock. 
because that's just waste. That, that is, that's not flexible. And, and it's, it becomes very difficult in this environment where customers are so demanding to, to manage that. So you just have to be close to where we are. There's just no, no substitute for it. And then assembly line coordination. We, we need to run efficiently. You know, we are charged and, and tasked every year to improve our productivity and our efficiency. And we cannot do that without our suppliers. So you guys are partners in this with us. So building significant amounts of inventory is not a long-term solution for you to be a great supplier to UTC or to any of the other companies out here. You just have to understand what it's going to take to be very flexible and, 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 bear, and bear very proactive with us. So we have a rigorous process when we start a new program or we bring a new supplier on, we find a new opportunity. And we, we go through this rigorous process and the burden is on you as a supplier to understand exactly what our needs are so that you can bring the best solution forward that you possibly can. And, it, and if you do that, it, it, that, will, that will greatly enhance your opportunity to be you know, a longer term supplier with us and not a, tran, you know, not a transactional supplier, but a partner. So, some, so some, some key things on logistics, as I said, order quantities and delivery requirements. We have factories that want deliveries every couple hours. We have factories that can take a delivery once a day. But it's, it varies, and you have to be able to do both. If you want to be a supplier to UTC, you, you have to be able to do both. We need short lead times. Our customers are demanding products with very short lead times, and they don't accept excuses. So we need our suppliers to do the same. So my message is early involvement. When you think you have an opportunity, you need to be engaged and involved very early to understand all of our requirements. How does our factory operate? What's important to us? You know, what, how does our customer, you know, what do our customers expect so that you can understand why it is that we need all this? And then after we, after we, we select you as a supplier, there's a very rigorous qualification process, and we talked about some of that already. So what do I mean about logistics? Um, it's not just good enough to, to get the part to my dock on time. We need the correct product in the correct quantity, and if I want one, I should be able to get one, at the, at the right place and the right time. And it gets delivered right to my line so that my, my line technicians can efficiently assemble that part to our, to our, to our system. So just in time. You know, we don't have floor space to store lots of inventory. Just in sequence. Right? Not just delivered the, the correct part in the quantity, but it sequenced exactly to our schedule. We unload it off the truck, and as our technicians use it, it's right in sequence with our, with our assembly line. We build a mixed model. We don't build the same thing over and over again. We have model changeovers on the residential side, but on our commercial side, we build different things. Everything coming down the line has got something different about it. And we want components to be right, into that, right in that sequence, especially when they're big and bulky because we, we just don't have a place to put it and we need to run efficiently. And that's, that's your role as a supplier to help us run efficiently is to be just in sequence with us. And finally, Kanban. You know, there's no substitute for a visual system. You know, it, it reduces the amount of inventory. It, 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 that forecast variation and the day-to-day -day changes in, in demand are all consumed by that. So, my, I guess my overall message here is that on-time delivery and delivery logistics, just, they just cannot be separated. You can get that product to me on time and your metric will show you're 100% on time, but if it doesn't come to me in an efficient manner and I have waste in dealing with, with your product, we're not running efficiently. And we need you as suppliers to be able to run efficiently. Our suppliers have become a, a, a basically a piece of our factory. And as you can see right here, I mean, we have a receiving area, but you, the, our suppliers are almost on site and a part of our factory because of how critical these, these logistics are. So you play a major role in how our factories operate and if operate efficiently. So j quality, delivery, it's very important, but that logistics and that service, what I'll call service, is, is what differentiates you from your competitors out there. It's what differentiates us from our competitors, is the service that we, that we provide, the flexibility that we, that we have. So 
it's, it's, it's vitally important for the supply chain to understand your role in, in our factory operations. And I think that this slide does a very nice job of, of, of illustrating that. So cost. I, I just have this one slide on cost. Because to me, if you have done all of the things previously well, you will be a cost competitive supplier. I, I truly believe that. If you understand that the commitment to a, a culture that's, that's based on continuous improvement and flexibility and customer service, and you produce perfect parts every time, and you deliver them to me in a manner which I can efficiently use them on my assembly line, you have all the intangibles there to be a low cost and a, a cost competitive supplier. Our customers across all the products in here, they have many options for, um, for, for appliances, HVAC, home goods, white goods, all of them. OEMs have many options. We as carrier have many options for suppliers. I mean, there's, it, it, I mean you can see this in this room. So you have to differentiate yourself. And cost is just the final component of it. But again, if you do everything else up to this point, I believe that the cost comes right with it. Competition's fierce out there. It's fierce in our market. It's fierce in the home goods market. It's fierce you know, in, the, in the component supply chain. That's just where we are today. This is a global environment. You know, we, we are competing across, all across the world. And our customers, you know, if, if we can't deliver the quality and the value that they, they feel is they require, then they'll find somebody else. That's just the fact of the matter. So you have to differentiate yourself through all these things, through product innovation, through technology game changers, bringing us VAVE, value engineering, value analysis, bring us a, a better way to build a mousetrap. And if, if your company is successful at all these things, at, at establishing that culture, and, and, and driving that quality and, and customer-focused organization, the cost element comes with it. You, you, will have the, you will have the ability to be a cost-competitive supplier out there. So just kind of in summary, um, I think, again, what I said, cost-competitiveness is a, is a consequence of the culture, the foundation that you build for your company. The markets that we compete in, OEM manufacturers compete in, they're very stable. You know, the urbanization is a, is a mega trend and it's not gonna stop. Standards of living are going up a, across the globe. Uh, once people achieve a certain standard of living, they're not gonna go backwards. The products that we compete in set standards of living and they're necessary. So we're, we are a very sustainable company and we think that we're a very preferred customer because of that. You know, and I'll give you an example that in the United States, there are 90 million installed residential systems right now in homes. And they, about every 15 years, they wear out and have to be replaced. So you can do the math. I mean, that's 6 million systems a year that we're going to build whether or not one new home is constructed. But that new housing market, the as I said, the standard of living, the urbanization, it's all increasing right now. And, and the one nice thing about the housing market is it can't be negative. It can't take out of this installed base that, that's going to have to be replaced. And people are not going to go back to electric blankets and fans and you know, being uncomfortable. We've gotten accustomed to being in a room like this where we can all be with lights and with lots of people and we're comfortable. And Carrier's a big, big piece of that. And for that reason, we think our company has long-term sustainability. And we have growth, There's, the potential for growth is immense because of this mega trend <clears throat> of, of urbanization. It's happening, across the, it's happening across the globe. The regulatory in the competitive environment is changing faster than ever. Faster than ever. You know, we're releasing new product platforms at a faster rate than we ever did to keep up with these re changing regulatory requirements. And we need you as suppliers to be working with us and anticipating what the next step is going to be and designing a product that's going to take our product to that new, that new required efficiency level. With, you know, without our supply base, any OEM in the room, you know, my competitors are here, the home, good, the home goods uh, companies are here, none of us can compete without our, without our supply chains. You're a vital piece of all this. And, and when you recognize that and understand what it is that we need, 
the, the opportunities to me are, 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 are everywhere. And it's not just, it might not just be with Carrier, it could be across all of these OEMs. So understanding you know, your role in this is, is, is vitally critical. And, and you can differentiate yourselves through those three pillars, right? Quality, delivery, and service, right? And you notice I didn't mention cost. I, I'm not a big, you know, cost is very important, but I, I believe that that comes along if you do the rest of this right. So our value, chain, our value stream and our value chain is only as strong as the weakest link. And you can see from our, our metrics that we have some weak links out there and we just won't tolerate that. It, it's not tolerated by our CEO. So as the category manager for the products I manage, I can't tolerate that either. And I'm constantly looking for someone who can do the job. All of our category managers are, and I'm certain that my competitors are, in the, are doing the same thing. And, and you're an integral part of the UTC's value chain. You know, you, you may not be recognized when our customers see our product, but, but believe me, you are an integral part of our supply chain. So with that, I thank you, muchas gracias, and I will uh, take questions. Thank you, Chad, for, for explaining all this in detail for us. So I'm going to take questions now, but for me, first, I'm going, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, it's, it's very important for uh, small companies uh, to have an opportunity to enter uh, a, a big OEM. What do you think a Mexican company that is starting or has, I don't know, maybe 50 employees and one, wants to go, wants to be a supplier of car, because you are very strict in your requirements to the suppliers, what they have to do to be part of the ch value chain of your company? So I think it comes right back down to the temple, you know, and if you start with that culture, the owner of the company sets the entire tone for the rest of the employees that work there. This, is, this, this has to be a top-down proposition. You know, when the, when, the, when the CEO or the president sets the proper tone, everybody that works in that company um, em emulates that tone. And without that support, the person on the shop floor, the technician on the shop floor, he's, he's going to be powerless to, to implement that kind of culture that will result in perfect quality, on-time deliveries, and in, in with with the logistics that we require to, to be efficient in our factories. So understanding that I think first building that culture and, and having an, a company that is, is focused on continuous improvement and focused on providing value to your customer, that it starts right there. And then it's the, it's the involvement with us as a major OEM to find out how and where you fit in and then understanding all of our requirements for what it's gonna to take to be a supplier. And we have, like I said, plenty of opportunity. You can see that we have too many suppliers that aren't performing to our standards. So there is opportunity out there, but you have to be committed and you have to invest the time and effort to, to provide the, the quality and the delivery and the service that's gonna to take to get in the door and develop your, develop your relationship with us. Um, another question. What's the average time for a new company to be approved or qualified to be a supplier, on average, an estimate? Yeah, so there, there's two pieces of that, right? There's the qualification of your processes and your, and your operations, and there's the qualification of your product in our system, right? Typically, qualifying your product in our system takes the longest amount of time. You know, our, we have a very stringent engineering process. We have to make we have our equipment is all rated with agencies and we have to maintain those, the, the, the performance of our equipment and when we get audited, we, we cannot fail. So we go through a very rigorous process to make sure that we don't have any concerns about the performance of your product. We also have to qualify the reliability. You know, our equipment is, is warrantied for 10 years and we expect it to operate for 15 years. Consumers are gonna spend a lot of money on, a, on an air conditioning 
or a furnace, and they expect that to run for 15 or more years. That's just the way it is these days. So the, so the engineering piece of it can, can take quite a bit of time because we have, to be, we have to convince ourselves that your product is going to be reliable and is going to perform at least as good or better than the product that's already in, the, in, the, in, our, in our system today. And then the, the operational qualification side. You know, we, we are going to come and see your operations and we're going to audit and we're going to want to see evidence that you have a, a, a robust quality management system that's going to prevent bad parts from escaping and getting to us and that you can handle the, the delivery and logistical requirements that we have. It's going to take objective evidence. Anybody can come and say, yeah, we can do it. But we're going to come and we're going to want to spend a lot of time looking for objective evidence that you can do it. And when, when you can demonstrate that, and then we can qualify on the engineering side, you know, I would, if I were to say, if I were to give kind of a range of times, I mean, it could be as little as six months, but it could be over a year. It could be a year and a half. Depends on the component. You know, something that's electronic or has moving parts, you know, that's going to take longer. If we're talking about sheet metal stamping or, um, you know, a, a fabrication, a copper fabrication, you know, it, it's not quite the, the, the difficulty of qualification. That's not quite as, as much. But if it's got moving parts or if it's electronic, it, it's going to take a, a, a pretty rigorous process to go through. And, you know, we, we look for our suppliers to be able to provide us as much reliability data and reliability uh, testing that you can on your product so that we can not have to duplicate that. There's no substitute for us doing the performance testing in our equipment to, con to confirm that we still make the ratings for that unit. But if you can demonstrate good reliability, we can have confidence in your lab that your lab is certified or it has the, the, uh, the capabilities that, that we would otherwise have in our own labs, then, then we'll take your data. You know, we'll review it, we'll ask questions, we'll pick it apart. But if you can convince us that you've done the due diligence and your product is reliable, we can reduce that time a little bit. But the, the performance in our unit and the, the qualification of your processes and your quality management system is just an absolute. So I, six months, a year, I mean, it's, it's a rigorous process. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for, very much for, for this conference, for coming down here to Monterey. And uh, if there's uh, no more questions, we are going to continue with our program. I All invite right. my, the president of the cluster to Thanks. give you All right. a small token of our appreciation. Thank you, and really appreciate Thank you for being here. Thank you.